I found it. It's <laughs> so, a very heroic pose. That you guys, there. you guys actually. The fun thing is, is that was actually Amanda Narcissi um, with Bold Pittsburgh. I, I do some work with them, and she was like, "We need to have some photos." I hate to have my picture taken, like at most costs. Yeah. I, I avoid the camera like the plague if I absolutely can. And she was legit like, we need to do this. So we got together downtown at a little parklet and took some photos and we were doing some like spot on stuff. And then there was this nice little ledge and she was like, let's, let's put you up here and just give me like some, some Superman pose stuff. And we both love the photo. So that has become my photo. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it makes it a little bit easier. This, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, I guess we're opening, maybe? Possibly? So yeah, like I so said, this, this is a session that I presented at WordCamp uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was interesting because WordPress it has been around for some time. And when we first started podcasting, WordPress is where we, where we lived. So that's where we currently live because it makes it a lot easier. Um, anybody familiar with WordPress? Okay. We, we currently have our blog on WordPress. I'm not awesome at it. Okay. Um, I know how to make posts, and that's about you know the extent right. of my yeah. knowledge. Well, tell you yeah. what, but I'm going to just go ahead and scrap this because this goes through the history of podcasting and very little bit with regard to what we're doing. Um, so we're going to go here. This is a WordPress site. I like WordPress versus Squarespace for this because this is, in my opinion, a little more customizable. And I can do kind of some more fun stuff. Putting the ads in on the side of it works really well with WordPress because we have a nice little widget that I just go in and I tell the widget what I want in there and it fills it in. Yes? Question already. When you say you have a widget, do you use the, the, the downloaded app to put your post together or do you go into the online site builder and, and have oh. an online widget or I go into the online site builder I have I love widgets I live in widgets so at, at WordCamp it was kind of interesting because we learned that there are two different camps at WordCamp there are the coding people which I am not and then there are the widget people okay. which I am <laughs> because coding I can do basic coding I can do website stuff if I need to it's great um, I prefer widgets because they make it dummified. Um, I can go in instead of doing all of the HTML and all of the code and CSS to build out how that looks on the side. I can tell my widget, I want to have it be this width. I want to have it be this height and I want to have real text link and I can copy and paste and put the link in directly without having to go in and do all the insert JPEG, da da da, location, address, link, blog, all that. It saves me a ton of time doing it this way. Um, but it's not bad to it's not bad to do. Um, so yeah, wid widgets are widgets are my friend. Um, with podcasting, those of us who have, who are podcasters realize that. Your podcast lives wherever your podcast is hosted. So if you're hosting with Libsyn or if you're hosting with uh, one of the other hosts, that's where your podcast lives. But that's not where your podcast survives, so to say. Um, you need to push it to your iTunes. You need to push it to your Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, wherever you're, you're pushing it to for your people to find it. The website makes it super easy because for our podcasts, this is for our main podcast network. So we get a new podcast from the broadcast. We post it up on here and it posts timeline. So we post our main shows, like our in-house stuff, Awesome Cast Mayhem Show. We do those Tuesday night. We post them Wednesday morning, between Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. We have um, the broadcast. They usually give us theirs Thursday-ish. So usually we'll, we'll post it and we'll promote it on Thursday. When we actually push post to go live on this, we have it set up that it automatically tweets and posts to our Facebook. So it's one less thing that we need to do when we're promoting it, which makes it so much nicer because it's not having to do, all right, I've got it posted over here. Let me post it over here. Let me post it over here. I've now spent 
four years of my life posting one podcast. Um, which makes it really nice, like I said, to, to kind of automate it and, and make it flow easy peasy. Um, for our main site, like I said, this, this is where all of our podcasts live, but we also have specific pages for each of our podcasts because I heard about the awesome cast and I really like, this is their page, but I don't see the awesome cast coming up in here. Where, where do I find the awesome cast? Cause these are our most recent posts on the front page. Uh, so I could go up to my podcast. Oh, there's the awesome cast. Let's check out the awesome cast page. So the awesome cast lists all of the information where you can find the awesome cast. So if you want to download and subscribe, we have iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Radio Public is a new one that we recently found. Uh, it has our Twitter, our Facebook, all of the episodes you can find through Fireside FM. And otherwise you can find through the Sor Sorgatron Media. And we've got that set up that this is pretty much just like a search feature mm -hmm. through our website. But when we click on that, we can also go to our main site that we have for the awesome cast. So this is where the awesome cast lives. Another WordPress page. Uh, when we send out our tweets each week, um, I mentioned in, in the last session about <laughs> we send out 28 tweets a week for our podcasts. So when I push live on this, I get the link for the URL. I go to my bit.ly and like, we'll take, we'll take this week's awesome cast. For instance, we've got the awesome cast with uh, Frank Margie. This was our episode that we recorded this week. I will go up here to the URL. I'll go to bit.ly and I will put that in there so that I get a bit link. And I like bit.ly because it tells me specific statistics for that particular link. So it can tell me who's clicking it, where they've clicked it, um, where they're clicking from, and it gives me some additional analytic information versus just taking this entire thing and dropping it in. Plus, the other nice thing is with Twitter, 140 characters. It shrinks it down. That's a lot of character space for, for Twitter. That's pretty much the only reason why I ever use Bitly is to shrink it down. Oh, yeah. I know that it has those analytics, but yeah. I'm, I'm just lazy, and I'm like, I need the space. So I use no, it. periodically, like especially for our live shows, mm -hmm. I do a bit.ly for our live shows when we're doing our Facebook Live because I want to know how many people are looking at my live tweets. When it comes down, I can go back into bit.ly and I can see that 16 people clicked during that hour on AwesomeCast. Mm -hmm. So I got 16 viewers who clicked from my tweets, which again shows that my tweets while I'm live tweeting are working. Um, another bit of information from the last session is to see, aren't you glad you came over here? <laughs> It's an extended um, version. Exactly. Um, like I said, PodCamp is a continued conversation the entire weekend. Uh, so, yeah, this, like I said, it's, it's, it's all WordPress, and this is where my podcast essentially lives. We have our Twitter, we have our social, we have our Facebook. They all, oh, you're, you're attending, you're not needing me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, this is this is where the podcast lives. Um, when I mentioned in, in the previous one, you want your you want your website to be your home nation. You want your social media to be your your ambassadors. You want them to point back to your home nation. Because again, if you're looking at Twitter, you're looking at Facebook, it's limited to what you can do. Uh, if you go to Twitter, for instance, you can't tell people about you know, the specific information for this particular podcast episode because that's way more than 140 characters. So if I send them a link, and usually I take this right here. That's my tweet that I send out mm. for my 28 tweets. I just pretty much take the show notes, what we talked about, highlight specific information, and then add the bit.ly to the end of it. And there's my, there's my tweet and Hootsuite, um, which makes it super easy. And this is all because I have a website. Um, the other nice thing about the website is if if somebody finds me through the iTunes directory, they're going to have an iTunes thing. But if they do a Google search and all they find is my iTunes registry and they're on an Android device, how, 
how deep are you going to look if you can't find the information you're looking for quickly in a Google search on where to find a podcast? So by having the website, again, it's you're putting content up there regularly. It's adding to your Google juice. You're putting in your descriptions. You're putting in your stuff, and it's it's getting the information out there to the internet, so that when I do a search for AwesomeCast on the internet, I don't want find .com. I just want AwesomeCast. The very first thing that comes up is my website, AwesomeCast.com. Uh, my Twitter comes up next. My YouTube channel comes up after that. When you search your stuff, essentially that's how you want it to come up. Because if your content's not coming up at the top, there's a problem with your SEO somewhere. <laughs> um, comic books in particular, a lot of people talk about comic books. Uh, comic book movies coming out as much as they are. Again, it's another thing that you're talking about. Tim, I know that you do a lot of music stuff, so your music, I mean, if you do a Google search for, for music stuff, if you don't have a website that music had on Jupiter that people can point to, it gets lost in the, the Google shuffle. So it's different things that having the website, you can tweak it and hone it to, to make it easier for people to find you. And like I said, the other nice thing is we have, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also subscribe to our social, Facebook, and Twitter. It's all spelled out right there and makes it easy for people. Uh, the other nice thing about it is, is that the form that we're using, we're reworking a lot of our websites. This is, this is next on the chopping block. Because mobile compliant. How often do you find yourselves at your laptop? Um. Uh, I, we're probably a bad example all the time. So. Oh, okay. You are a bad example then. Yeah. <laughs> but generally speaking, most people are, are sitting on their mobile device, mm -hmm. you know, either this or an iPad. They're not on a formal desktop yeah. situation. So because they're not on a desktop situation, you know, hey Siri, find AwesomeCast. You get your you get your voice search, and. Spider Man, homecoming, baby driver. The big C. I have no Wonderful. idea what Siri is even telling me right now. Very formal, but not helpful for what you ask. <laughs> no. So it's nice to have, like I said, a website because I can tell my adaptive device to open awesomecast.com. And when we're talking about our podcast, we always refer people back to, you can check us out at awesomecast.com or .net because we have both of them now and they direct to the same site. Um. So it, it makes it nice because this is where people are ultimately going to find you if they're finding you new. Um, it's going to be somebody referring somebody to you or it's going to be somebody, you know, checking something out. Um, it's, it's information that makes it easy for you to be found online um, without having to go through a specific Stitcher, Springer, or Radio, whatever um, type of search. Um, like I said, the customizable is I, I can't say enough about the customizable. I can put in links to our Patreon supporter. I can put in, listen to our recent episode, and we have this through, I think this is technically through Spreaker, and it automatically updates. It pulls in when we upload to Spreaker that, oh, you have a new episode. We're going to put this one on your website. So when people are, they stumble upon my website, they want to see what it's about, not sure if I want to actually subscribe to this podcast yet, so I don't want to waste my, my podcast subscription stuff. I can actually listen and see if I like it. We have our main show, and we have our chat series. So we have two different shows that are associated with the awesome cast. And again, both of the most current episodes are up there. And this specifies awesome chat interview versus the main show. Um... Advertising, again, we, we have Google Ads that we put in there. So we, we have the Google Ad revenue, which was another thing that I forgot to mention in the other session. So kudos, you guys get bonus points. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, we, we've got our Google Ads going in there. And the nice thing about this is that this has picked up on the fact that, oh, this is a tech podcast. We're going to do tech stuff over here. Mm -hmm. So it, it specifies what ads are going to show relevant to what we're working on, the way that we've tweaked our Google Ads. And then we have 
essentially our sponsors, so our Slice on Broadway that we talked about with the free pizza that we get each week. Um, it's an in-kind sponsorship that we have with them. We share the love everywhere. We put them on our websites, all of them, because they're just that awesome, and, and it's a great relationship that we have with them. And then we also restream through the River's Edge, which is the streaming uh, radio that Mike was talking about during the keynote. Mm -hmm. That's the, the radio station that he was talking about. And the 405 Media is kind of interesting because we didn't contact them to get on that network. It was kind of a mutual, a friend of ours was like, hey, they've got this thing over here, you should be doing this. They're up in California. And our broadcast times on that coincide with drive time. So Awesomecast is morning drive time. And the Mayhem Show, I think, is their evening drive time or like mid to late night around the time that wrestling would be coming on. So they have specifically, like their scheduling has taken into consideration our stuff. And it's because we get the regular content. We have a weekly episode that we're putting up. We Every single week we have an episode. If we don't have an episode to go up that week, we either do a recirculation or we put a notice up and is, with as much advanced notice as we can to let people know that it's not going to be there. Which is again helpful to have the website because if somebody goes to listen to our podcast and we're not live on Facebook where we're supposed to be, where do they find us? They're going to hit us up on Facebook. But if you hit somebody up on Facebook, what's the general response time that, that you get for like a business on Facebook? It, it could be it could be a whole day and exactly that person. You know, you'll lose out on that person's interest at that point. Exactly. So in the meantime, if I want to figure out why why aren't they live, they should be live. I should be seeing the the screenshot of like Beachview, the traffic going by, the the T from their camera outside the window. I should see the stuff. Why am I not seeing it? You know what? Let me check their website because I don't know if maybe Sword was out of town this week. Maybe they're doing a remote episode. Let me check. I can go to the website, and oh yeah, there's a post up there on the website that says, "Hey guys." We're taking a vacation this week. We're not going to be around. But you can enjoy this episode with, you know, whatever we did from PodCamp last year. You know, here you go. You can check this out. Again, this is why you want a website for it. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the website. Uh, the WordPress, like I said, WordPress questions specifically, if you have any. I'll go ahead and uh, um, delve yeah. into that. The way that we got, uh, we have a uh, web comic mm -hmm. that also accompanies the podcast. Okay. And we had someone else build the web, uh, the uh, WordPress site. Okay. So uh, our knowledge about how to manipulate it and change the things around is limited. Okay. Do you have any suggestions to any resources to like maybe learn more about WordPress? Okay. Um, if WordCamp were after PodCamp this year, I would totally push you toward WordCamp because yeah. they are specifically WordPress-based. However, um, Terry Orlowski is, is rolling around here. She is like a WordPress guru. So any specific questions you have, I'm going to direct you to her because her expertise and knowledge on WordPress far exceeds mine. I mean, I'm, I'm good at it. She is guru level, like amazeballs. Like she she knows her stuff, um, so that that's where I'm I'm sending you for her. Okay. In the meantime, we can have a conversation though. Um, you can look at different themes. Um, we change the PodCamp theme yearly just because it we like to give it a refresh. So I'm actually going to. I think our biggest hurdle is that for the way that we wanted our webcomic to be presented, we had sort of a customized theme sort of worked up for us. It doesn't necessarily work in the fashion, after using it for a few months, doesn't really work in the way that 
wanted it to, and yeah. it might not be the best to also highlight a podcast. So that's kind of what we're running into. Yeah, and that that kind of works. So this is this is the back end of PodCamp. Mm. Um, so never. Um, so this this is you're familiar with the dashboard. Yep. Uh, th this is your dashboard, and if you go into appearance themes. I like this because you they give you some basic themes that you can look at. So this this is actually um, my installed themes and you can see how many themes we have renditioned through. Mm -hmm. so you said you change them about every year? Right about. To refresh. Yeah. Okay. And there are some years that um, like this year for instance we were looking for mobile mm -hmm. adaptivity without actually hiring someone to write mobile script for us. Um, because that can get kind of costly and we don't have any friends within that space that we were like, hey, we'll put you in as a, you know, in-kind sponsor for PodCamp type of thing. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those deals where we, we did what we could. Yeah. And so I installed one, like this Gonzo one, I installed it. And then when I was looking at it on mobile, I didn't really like how it looked on mobile. Mm -hmm. So then we went with, you know, this Genesis, again, liked bits and pieces, didn't like overall. Um, so we wound up going with uh, the EMAG this year because I liked it. It was customizable without having to know a whole lot of stuff. And it's something that I didn't need to rely on people like Terry with, you know, a higher end level of, of coding and different things like that, that I could do it myself. Um, the code that I do know I can easily apply and it makes it super easy. Um, the biggest thing you need to be aware of with, with code and WordPress is that if you break something, you can break something. That's my apprehension into yeah. going into that. I, I, we yeah. all have a classic print mm -hmm. uh, design background, but mm -hmm. coding, things like that, I have very li limited or no experience yeah. with. And Terry, I don't want to break it. Terry is a huge component of a staging site mm -hmm. for WordPress. So like her... Just delete it if it breaks. Ex exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what it does is it takes your site, this is what I'm doing with the uh, Melville Music site right now, is it takes your site and you can copy it over to a shadow site mm -hmm. and it will let you make the tweaks and changes over here and if it breaks it over here, it doesn't break your main page. Okay. Um, WordPress itself has a, has a plug-in. Um, I think it's W, actually, let me go to my plugins, because uh, the plugins are also where it gets uh, nice and handy. Um, add new. Recall, I, I'm blanking on the WordPress thing for the copy. No, I mean I don't. Oh, you just I, know I, you know it exists. For me, okay. it's conceptually like, well, why not just make a duplicate? Oh, okay. Then... Yeah, they they have one. Um, I'll have to I'll have to let you guys know what it is later because I I can't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, but, I'm just super apprehensive about yeah, no, it, really it creates, going and making any big changes. It creates a shadow site. Okay. So you can legit like work over here without breaking your main site. And it doesn't swap over to your main site until you tell it to. Okay. So you can literally do the build out and then instead of having bits and pieces of your website that you're you're working on like day by day, uh -huh. you can work day by day on the shadow site and then when it's ready to go, you can tell it to port over. And it'll literally replace your other site. That's awesome. That's exactly what yeah. I feel so like I need. It does that, and you can you can play with it. It's a little bit of a playground, um, and like I said, it makes it way easier, so it doesn't break your stuff. Okay. Because again, with WordPress, unless you specifically know what you're doing in there, you can break it. Mm -hmm. um, you noticed when I went into our plugins that, like, there were some things that I didn't have updated mm -hmm. because when I updated them, I broke the site. <laughs> We were hosted on Shift Collaborative, mm -hmm. and I we had to contact our person over there. I'm like, okay, so 
PodCamp site doesn't load anymore because I broke it. Can you give me a back end? Like, can you get in and get so I can get back in? Yeah. Because since she's the admin, she was able to get in and, on her end within her server to do it. Because of my access to it, it's not like our hosted site. I couldn't, there was no way that I could do it. Um, but yeah, the, the check check out the, the copy thing and it'll, uh, it'll help. Yeah, I, I definitely need a shadow site. Yeah, so the shadow site will, will definitely be helpful in that regard. Um, unless you, you, can, you can try different themes in there, you can try different aspects in there. Uh, like I said, the widgets, and this is where I'll show you our, our handy dandy widgets. So literally that entire sidebar that we have mm -hmm. is nothing but widgets. And so it gives our search function and you can install widgets. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what, what we did is we, based on your, based on what WordPress site you're using, it'll tell you what widgets you can use. Based and, on like the theme? Yes. Okay. And then um, it gives you a, a managed live preview so you can actually, like if you're more of a visual person, you want to see how it's interacting. Mm -hmm. You can click on that and it'll kind of work to show you visually what it's doing. But we have, like I said, the search bar at the top. We've got, you know, the join our mailing list. There's our fun custom code from MailChimp about joining our mailing list. Uh, we have our corporate sponsors, which is, again, the images, but you can't just copy and paste images in. So this is where I need to know some coding because I coded each of the images with each of the links to make sure that they all worked. <laughs> and... It's it's a fun little fun little venture on that part, but um, it works out pretty well for that regard. Um, and then I could see to make sure that my images weren't completely blown out and that everything came together pretty well over here. And then you know our VIPs, essentially, our individual people uh, got their name, got their Twitter handle. The name links to their website. And the Twitter handle actually links to their to their Twitter profile so that people can check them out and follow them, all that fun jazz. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our Facebook plugin. So it, it shows our Facebook <laughs> posts. And same thing for the Twitter. And Jetpack, if you don't have Jetpack installed, I suggest it because it makes your site awesome. Uh, it gives you some cool integration things like this because you see where it says Twitter timeline jetpack. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's a comprehensive tool that you can install and it'll give you additional resources. It'll essentially boost some of the things you can do with your WordPress site. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty awesome as far as that's concerned. Yes. What are you using to host these images? Since you're having to link to the oh the URL where they're being held. And media. Okay, so you can still just upload those into yep. your WordPress library. Um, library, add new. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's what I did with the um, integratable PDF that I did for the mm -hmm. thing. I just went to add new media, and then I uploaded, you know, selected the file, and it let me put in the PDF. I couldn't, when I linked to the PDF in the actual post about, hey, we have the interactive schedule online. Um, it didn't let me, like it just did it as a text. So I took a screenshot of the Im of the first page, put that in, and that's that little image that comes up. And then that's, I put the link in there. But when you click on that, it opens as a PDF in a separate form. Um, again, just something that I know myself, I like to be able to have that functionality when I'm going to an event. And I try to make this work that way. So, so that's kind of how we do that. Um, the one thing that I like about Squarespace, honestly, over WordPress, is I can do multiple, like post, mm -hmm. con like blog content, in Squarespace. Whereas WordPress, it's a little more complicated. Um, so, like our speakers are set up as essentially blog and it's the way that it works with the plugin that we have for this so each of our each of our speakers each of our presenters is essentially a new blog post okay. for it and then it integrates 
I can then take that speaker information and link back to our speakers for the event. So when you look at the schedule, you click on the, the description for the session, it has the bio, and then it has the session description. You can click within there. Mm -hmm. This is what makes that possible. Okay. So it's a separate hidden thing that we, we manage with it. We could make this public, but then we have way more stuff in our header than I necessarily want. So it's kind of one of the things that, we're, again, we're adaptive year to year. Um, sometimes we do like a speaker profile and we have it out there. Other times we're like, oh, we'll just link it through their, through their stuff. Yes. Can you go back to the plugins page real quick? I yeah, say, so where are my plugins? <laughs> so I see that you have one that just allows you to have a, you know, click play audio window on your on your page. Um, it was a different layout last time. No, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, oh, was um, it in is it when plugins? I was? It was in maybe, maybe, probably, or an editor maybe. Uh, it might have been the add new when I was searching. Okay. Okay. Um, this, yeah, it looked more like this. Like it looked like that. Yeah. But it was. It just said add audio to your. Like it looked like it was a really simple plugin that just added an audio box. So do you then have to go in? You mentioned this in passing earlier. Do you then have to point that to where you're hosting the audio? Well, here's here's the fun thing that I like to do with our audio. If you go to, uh, we use Fireside for our audio host for many of our podcasts. So when I sign in for my Fireside, I hope that's the right password, it's not. You know what? I have LastPass on my regular PC, so it's mm -hmm. usually just like, click. <laughs> so this, this is a little more difficult over here. Um, I'm going to get one more shot. Nope. Okay. So... What Fireside does, and I know Libsyn also does the same thing, is when you upload it, you can go to, it'll give you an embed code. That's what we do for the embed code. So when you're looking at this over here on the AwesomeCast, and that, right. that's the embed code that my host gives me. And it's nice because, again, it's right there. People can play it in the stream. They don't need to worry about I'm not sure I want to download it, but I want to play it. There you go. And so you don't necessarily need a separate plugin for that. You can just put that embed code yep. in the HTML box. Yep. Because that's, that's exactly how, how we do it. Um, trying to think of now all my other stuff I'm going to need to have. My last pass, and it's like ridiculous master keys so I couldn't even like type in if I really wanted to but yeah it, it gives you the embed code um, that makes it a heck of a lot easier and it integrates well with their system so again if you're tracking stats through Libsyn or through Fireside it keeps track of who's listening to it that way as well um, so it, it includes it um, Yeah, like so that's that's the easiest way that I would suggest doing it. Now, WordPress does have like PodPress and different things. But again, the question is you have to host it somewhere else anyway. If you have enough space on your WordPress, you you just not like have a bunch of space on whatever wherever you're hosting your WordPress page, that's fine. Otherwise, using a secondary site such as Podcast Libs and SoundCloud whatever makes sense because audio and video files can get massive. 
And if you're limited to certain you know, data storage, it's going to eat up space. Which, I mean, I know some of them uh, charge by the bandwidth and some charge by the hour. Mm -hmm. What's Fireside's Fireside? model? Fireside's model, and I love them. Like, I really do. Um, Fireside works well because they have, it's a flat rate. So we have currently on our podcast network 10 podcasts. Um, it's... I think 20-ish bucks for the first one, and then something like 10 for each after. It's a monthly expense. They don't have they don't have annual billing yet, which we had a client who was like, I just want to pay it all at once because I have to do purchase orders, and it's ridiculous. I'm like, eh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's, it's what works for you and your budget is essentially what it boils down to. And like I said, if you can get an in-kind sponsor or somebody who, you're, the Patreon stuff. Mm -hmm. If you can get a Patreon who can cover that eight bucks a month if it's a secondary podcast thing, you're good to go. What, what about that, Patreon? Oh, Patreon. It was what I, we covered in the mm -hmm. session before this one uh, when I was talking about uh, like sponsorship and different things. Right. Um, Patreon offers for individual sponsorships. So, um, Oh, as one of them, as one of your patron tiers. So yes. Like eight bucks a month. Okay. Well, no. What was is like we have we have different tiers, and like ours is like five bucks, and you are you, you get access to specialized content through Patreon, plus you get like shout outs on our social media and our, our podcast and stuff. So that's how we manage all that. And like so, that five bucks that they donate pretty much pays for our hosting, makes it easy peasy, and. Our, the podcast is essentially monetized at that point and somewhat paying for itself, um, which makes it nice. So yeah, um, looks like we're we're edging up on my getting out of here time. Any other questions or anything that you guys have with it? I don't. I think you gave me a lot of a lot of things to to think over, especially the uh, you know mirroring the site so that you can well, really work. With stuff and the one thing that we've not been doing really well about pimping for this year is that normally PodCamp we do sessions like this two days straight. Mm -hmm. Today we're doing these sessions. Tomorrow we're doing hands-on tutorials. Yeah. So if you guys can come back tomorrow, Terry's actually going to be one of our hands-on people. You can put your name in for the the drawing that we're going to do to like, hey, we're going to work on your stuff. Lucky person over here. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, worst case scenario, Somebody else might have a similar question, mm -hmm. cool. and you can see it if, if you don't get to do it. Otherwise, definitely talk to Terry because she a great resource. Cool, sounds good. Thank you. So yeah, well, thank you. Uh, like so the the key things to remember for this is this is where your podcast essentially lives. Or actually, I'll I'll take I'll take the key from from the one that I did at the WordPress session. Your Host is where it lives. This is where it works. This is where it goes to work. This is where it, it does its stuff. Um, you can customize it. You can integrate it. You can make it do what you want it to do. Um, like Libsyn, I know they have like their own little page. But again, they're not in the business of websites. They're in the business of podcasting. So you can list a description of your podcast. You can have your like sponsor information put in there. But it's limited to how you can make it look. It's limited yeah, it's to very work. very stark. Yeah, so it's it's cookie cutter. It's what they want it to do for their thing. It works well, but if you're looking to actually do any sort of formal design out for your podcast, this is where you're going to be doing it. Either this or a similar site like Squarespace or something. This is where it's going to be happening. All right. Well, thank you guys for, for stopping in. Uh, like I said, if, if you're interested in seeing how some of this it works in action, Come back tomorrow for our, our workshops, and otherwise, if you have any other questions, you can find any of uh, the people who were on stage at some point this morning, the speakers that are doing the sessions. We're all generally around and available, and we're here to answer questions and help you guys with whatever you're working on. Cool. cool. So thank you. Thank you. All right. This was very helpful. I'm glad. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you next so we can uh, follow you? Ladies' room.
Well, <laughs> I guess we won't be following you then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lunch lunch is actually next. So. <laughs> I have a question for you. It's kind of a new question. You oh, mentioned live tweeting oh. your podcast, but which I, confuses I, me. And I get I that um, Facebook Live and all of those sort of impromptu video things that social media is doing now is important for branding. But yeah. podcasts are something that, as I know, it, you record, you pre record, you edit, and then you like post. Yes. So what is this live live tweeting and live podcasting? All right. So our format for this is again with our Tuesday night thing. So I'm going to pull back up um, our Sorgatron Media stuff over here. Um, when we do our podcasts, I'm trying to find one of our good podcasts over here. Oh, Cynthia Klosky, that's a good one to pull up. We do Facebook Live video. We are recording the audio separate from the video. And we are working, essentially we, we do the live. So we set up the camera, we have our interviewee, or we have our, our guests, our panelists for our show in general, they're all talking about it. We've been doing podcasting, keep in mind, for like a decade. So Sorg knows what he's doing as far as the engineering end of things is concerned. He has a video switcher. We have professional cameras set up. Like it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's, it's our jam on Tuesday nights. And we have the video going to Facebook Live and Facebook Live essentially becomes our live chat room. So think of it like a video feed that we then turn into a podcast. Okay. So we take the audio from it, and then that goes to iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, because his big thing is, yeah, podcasts are great. Like, we started out podcasting. But we want to have more of that live talk show interaction with our guests because before Facebook – our interaction was send us an email or send us a voicemail and you know we would play the voicemails on air and it just didn't have the same capacity with it it didn't have the same oomph plus Sorg does video more than he does audio I mean he's he's an audio engineer but he's more a video engineer than an audio engineer so using video makes sense for what he wants to do with it um, we have Again, with our, with our setup, we have it so that if we're talking about a specific website, so um, our awesome cast, our general awesome cast show, um, we have links in here. Those are the news articles for tech that we pull from. We have a Google Doc that we put everything together and we put it in for the shows. So those are our show notes and he'll bring up each of these links during the show and he'll do a cut. So we've got the person down in the corner that's talking about it and then we'll have whatever they're talking about panned in so that people can see it. Um, he's it sounds a, like a pretty layered and complex. It is. Setup. It absolutely is. But again, he's a video guy, so it's completely in his wheelhouse. A simple way of doing it. I've done this in the past with other stuff I thought were really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put my podcast out, and then during the week I'll say, okay, Thursday night at 8 o'clock, we're going to listen to the show, and I'm going to live tweet it. Awesome. Okay, okay. And then, you know, usually people who listen to the show, they'll, you know, make fun of me as, you know, we're talking about the show that we already put out on Monday. No, but that's a great way to do it, because like yeah. I said, this integration, this integration is crazy, because... Sorg is running the switcher and everything like that. I'm doing the live tweets and the show notes live while we're talking about them. So like I'm taking everything and I'm doing that in a producer role essentially to capture that, which means that we need to have more than one person involved with this podcast. We have other podcasts that they don't like the, they have a lot of stops and stutters and you know, it false starts they don't want to have all of that be live. So they record and then they clean up the audio and then they push the podcast out. 
So doing the live stream and tweeting and stuff for that doesn't necessarily make sense, but I like that integration aspect with it. So do you just set a time that everybody tunes in on their own, or do you have it live streaming while you tweet it? No, I, it's, your own live streaming it's, well, again, I'm dumbing it down as much as possible because that's my level of intelligence. Yeah. No, you're but, good. Um, yeah, I, it's just, okay, everybody, 9 o'clock, you know, we're going to start the show. They, and they turn gonna, on their own devices? And yeah. On our own devices, okay. and we all listen to it separately. And you know, okay, here this was a hard break because Ian had to go take a pee, and I stopped the show finally. You know, mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. I mean, that that's just what it what becomes. Mm -hmm. it, and it's just a way of getting a community involved. Yeah, absolutely. Because a friend of mine that just started that, well, that they've been podcasting for about two months now, and they're still pretty small. But what they did was open a Facebook group, and then after every episode airs, they say, "Here's your discussion post." For and that's, it doesn't work in like science in the simultaneous time, but right. um, I, I your, yeah, product, your yeah. product's already in the can though, right? When you're yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you're, you're not you can't get we input. record on Saturday. I put it out on Sunday nights, and I'm saying like Thursday. Let's have some fun. Okay. Get together, listen to the show together, and That'd be let, really good do it like almost like a director's commentary. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is really what was going on behind the scenes because we don't do video or anything else. Yeah. So mm -hmm. If and we start giggling about something, it's because Ian showed me a picture, my co-host showed me something, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that that makes it and behind the scenes, but even, gets the community involved. Absolutely. And I love that because, like I said, ours, the easiest way for the community involvement with ours was to put it into Facebook. And it's fun because Sorg, again, the, the absolute professional that he is with it, he will make reference to, for those listening at home on the podcast, or, you know, for those listening on audio, we're, we've pulled up, you know, the website for the link in the show notes to whatever. So those person, if they're listening to it, they can click on the link in the show notes, and they can actually pull up and see what we're talking about. Um, and again, which is one of the other nice things with him doing the video integration, you have the audio up here on our page which is again why we, we promote having a, a home page for it. We have the audio, we have the show notes, you can see what we talked about, we have links to whatever we talked about. And then down here at the bottom, we have the, the YouTube video embed. So if you're an audio person, we have the audio. If you're a video person, we have the video. If you're, if you're audio and you, I gotta see what they're talking about here, like this, this is crazy how, what they're talking about. You can look where you are in the audio and you can pull up the video to pretty much that same spot and actually see something happened crazy in studio. Like, you know, Sorg went to take a piss and just left everything there. Um, you know, you, you can actually go to the video and see where that kind of looped in there. A similar situation, but with video versus audio. And I think the audio person is great. <laughs> so yeah, do awesome things, do amazing things. That's what we're here about. And I'm not always the expert because people do things differently, which is what I talked about at the beginning of the day. It's all about perspective and how you're using it.